Welcome to the Fortune Fastlane YouTube channel. According to documents submitted to the Securities and Exchange Commission, Moscovit spent $1.02 billion buying 15.8 million shares of Asana's Class A stock during the previous weeks. About 16% of Asana's outstanding Class A shares were purchased. Along with Mark Zuckerberg, Dustin Moskovitz was one of the founders of Meta Platforms Incorporated. When they were both Harvard undergraduates in 2004, he assisted in the site's debut. After the social network, then known as Facebook, had tremendous success, Moskovitz departed to co-found Asylum Incorporated with Justin Rosenstein in 2008. If you want more of this content, subscribe to the Fortune Fastlane YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. Asana's goal as a software-as-a-service firm was straightforward to offer a mobile work platform targeted at assisting businesses in managing their workflow in the workplace of the 21st century. The COVID-19 pandemic brought Moskovitz's dream to life by compelling a sizable portion of the world's workforce to engage in a remote work experiment on a scale that has never been attempted before. Like many other SAAS businesses, Asana saw a surge in the demand for its goods among its clientele, which helped drive up the price of the company's shares. According to Insider Score's Ben Silverman, Director of Research, this looks to be the first instance in which a single insider has purchased $1 billion worth of shares in a non-buyout circumstance. Insider Score records stock activity by corporate insiders. Data from the company dates back to 2004. Those who keep track of Asana Incorporated will undoubtedly find it interesting that Dustin Moskovitz, the company's co-founder, just bought shares for a whopping $350 million at an average price of $18.6 US dollars. Some wonder if their action, which increased their ownership by 80%, was motivated by a deep-seated calm hope. According to our data, Dustin Moskovitz's most recent acquisition of Asana shares was the largest one made by an insider individual in the previous 12 months. We still view insider purchasing favorably even if the transaction was done at a price that was much lower than the most recent price. Your assessment of whether insiders are well aligned with common shareholders may be influenced by looking at the overall insider shareholdings in a firm. Leadership in a corporation is frequently more aware of shareholder interests when insider ownership is strong. It's fantastic to see 55% of Asana, which was valued roughly at $2.9 billion, is owned by insiders. The likelihood that a firm is managed in the benefit of all shareholders does typically rise with this level of considerable insider ownership. In October 2020, the San Francisco-based business filed for an initial public offering on the NYSE. The stock shot up from around $27 per share at opening. 22% above the $21 NYSE reference price, to more than $140 per share in December 2021, a gain of more than 430%. This is when things start to get interesting. In June 2001, Moskovitz started to increase his holdings in Asana, beginning what is arguably the most aggressive run in insider stock purchasing ever. At first, he spent around $20 million buying 50,000 shares, at an average cost at $39.49 each. He expanded his holdings two weeks later by acquiring an additional 410,000 shares at an average cost of $42.35 per share. His most recent series of acquisitions, exactly 7 million shares, purchased for more than $400 million between December 30 and February 4 came after Asana shares saw a precipitous fall. Over the past week, the stock has increased. Asana declined to address the stock price fluctuation and stated that Moskovitz was unable to speak on his acquisitions due to the hush-hush atmosphere around the company's March 9 earnings announcement. All of the purchases made since mid-2021, according to SEC filings, were done using the 10B5-1 trading plan, an automatic system designed to prevent executives from trading on insider knowledge. This transaction does not prove much about the insider's opinion of current pricing, although it does imply they believe the stock is cheap at present levels. It is important for a common shareholder to learn how many shares are held by insiders of the business. If insiders hold a substantial percentage of the company's shares, some believe it is a positive indicator. 
According to the most recent share price, Asana Insiders hold 55% of the firm, which is presently valued at $2.9 billion. Seeing the most recent insider buy is undoubtedly positive. Additionally, the longer-term insider transactions inspire trust. However, some don't share the sentiments over the company's losses. When insider ownership is taken into account, it is clear that insiders are optimistic about Asana. With a total investment of $1.02 billion and a holding of nearly 21%, Moskowitz currently holds more than 16.5 million shares of Asana's Class A stock. Naturally, Moskowitz investments represent the most aggressive insider buying spree in history. Despite this, he can undoubtedly afford it. With a net worth of over $13 billion, Moskowitz is one of the world's youngest self-made billionaires. Moskowitz now owns 16.6 million Class A shares of Asana personally in addition to 4.1 million shares held in a trust. That amounts to 21% of the Class A shares of the corporation. He now owns 67.7 million Class B shares, or 76% of the existing shares of that class, of which has 10 votes. Before the most recent transactions at the time of the company's most recent proxy, Moskowitz had more than 60% of the voting power. With an estimated 2% interest in Meta, Moskowitz remained a significant investor. Asana fell 24% in an early trade on Thursday to reach $37.11, down by 34.53% overall. The S&P 500 has lost 10.25 in contrast over the same period. Asana is currently worth over $12.5 billion on the market. Since the stock went public in September 2020 via a direct listing on the New York Stock Exchange, it has seen a roller coaster journey. It peaked in November 2021 at $145 and began trading at $21. But the latest tech sell off has hit Asana shares, which dropped below $44 by late January. The stock has increased significantly in February, rising by more than 40% alone in the previous six trading days. The stock increased 3.6% on Friday to $66.89. Some don't share other sentimentals over the company's losses. These elements, together with the significant insider ownership, imply that Asana insiders are well aligned and may believe the stock price is undervalued. Looking good, it is useful to recognize the dangers Asana faces in addition to being aware of current insider transactions. According to Forbes, Moskowitz has a net worth of $15.3 billion, the majority of which is attributable to his estimated 2% share in Facebook parent company Meta Platforms FB. With Mark Zuckerberg, Eduardo Savarin, and Chris Hughes, Moskowitz co-founded Facebook in 2004, prior to departing in 2008 to create Asana with Facebook developer Justin Rosenstein. He served as the business's first chief technology officer. One of the technology industries with the quickest growth rates and the most intense competition in the workforce management software industry. WFM providers are vying of one another for clients as more businesses embrace remote work models spurred by the quick uptake of software as a service. Moskowitz is confident enough in his WFM platform to reinvest more than $1 billion in his business. Although the WFM software market's total accessible market is highly saturated, Asana must entice new customers away from rivals with innovative services and features. However, small businesses like Smartsheet, Trello, and Monday.com, behind larger firms like Microsoft and Atlas Saints Jira in terms of market share, while Asana is among those with a single-digit share, branding and name recognition are two strategies Moskowitz may use. As a co-founder of Facebook, the CEO already enjoys a solid public profile and is aware of the importance of strong branding. One of the astute business people who turned effective marketing into success and propelled Salesforce to the top of the customer relationship management sector is Mark Benyon. That's it for this video of Fortune Fastlaner. Remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person. As a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you take action that you'll start to see results. 
see you on the next one.